So the example of damped harmonic oscillation is an example of a more general type of amplitude varying formula. So we can actually have anything as the part of the, uh, any function we want as the amplitude. So f of t is equal to capital A of t. This is now a function times sine of bt plus k. And this now is the amplitude. It's a varying amplitude. And it could be whatever we want it to be. Uh, we can have this be another sine or cosine function. We could have this to be um, a line. This could be all sorts of things. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens when we change this and how we can start to conceptualize what exactly that function a of t is supposed to be doing. Okay, so here we are back in Desmos again. What I've done is I've graphed a sine bx plus k, where now a is this function right here for cosine mx. Now right now I have m equal to zero, so right now it's just a regular um sine function with an amplitude of, uh, of 4. And you see we have the value of b, which changes the rate of oscillation. We have k here, which is giving us the uh, location of the midline. We're going to actually set the midline equal to 0 for now and just hold it there so we can focus on um, the new ideas. So what we have here is what happens if we start to create this oscillation, right? And you can see that we start to get some things that uh, have some interesting shapes. And you can see as I start to change this parameter, different types of patterns evolve out of this thing. Now, what's really happening here? Well, what's really happening is that we have an envelope. So I've marked the envelope. You can see this blue line here and this purple line down here. And as we do this, we're actually changing that envelope. And so as that envelope changes, it creates different sort of boundaries that the vibrations have to stay within. Now, when I remove them, it's kind of hard to see that oscillating um, envelope. But once I put them in, you can start to match up a little better. And it also helps if I speed up the vibrations of the uh, of the uh, internal sine function. So you can sort of match that up a little bit better. And so this is what happens in general with these functions, is that in general, this amplitude, it can be whatever we want it to be. If I wanted to change it to being uh, a linear thing. So let's say uh, y equals, let's do x over 2. All right, so now we have the oscillating function falling inside of these lines. So these lines are now what we call the envelope. So we can see this one is increasing in amplitude as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Can zoom out and we can see it like this. So the last thing we need to talk about is what would happen if instead of varying the amplitude, we have we've instead varied the midline. And so for this, what we're going to do is just, instead of our um, amplitude being a function here, we're now going to have this k of t be a function. What does that mean? Well, all this is doing is this is un changing the underlying midline behavior. So uh, before when we were having varying oscillations, let's see if I can sketch this real quick. So if we had an envelope that looked like this, and the vibration of the function was happening, whoops, inside of that. Pretend that looks good. Um, the changing of the midline gives us now, instead, let's say the midline is an oscillating function. All of our oscillations now vary with the midline instead. And so you get this type of function. Uh, where does this show up in reality? Well, this actually shows up with the tides. Uh, you probably know about the tides. Come, the tides come in and out. There's a high tide and a low tide, and you can actually measure um, how high the tide is and how low the tide is, very you know, relative to I don't know anything that's uh, stable, like some you know some structure in the sand. Um, but as it turns out, that uh, that tide is not consistent every single day. It actually changes a little bit day by day. And so, so there's periods of times where the tide is on average higher and periods of time where the tide is on average lower. And this ha has to do with how the Earth rotates and now the location of the moon and the sun and all those sorts of things. Um, but basically, what we see is we have two different types of oscillation. We have an oscillation affecting the base, the midline of the, that curve. And then we have the little individual motion from the tide coming in and tide coming out. Uh, you see this uh, with regards to long-term pictures of climate. Um, the underlying climate, in this case, well, right now, the underlying temperature is increasing slightly. So if this is our average temperature, it sort of has this motion, but the day in, day out sort of motion goes up and down like this. So even though we sort of experience the ups and downs, 
uh, individually, there's an overall trend to this. And you can actually do this in an even more nuanced way in that you have not only um, here, this is sort of a very broad term picture of averages, maybe like a yearly average. If you do a monthly average, you will actually have three types of oscillation going on or three types of uh, midline of effects going on, three types of effects going on. You'll have the day in, day outs, up and downs. You'll have the seasonal up and downs, and then you'll have the overall trend over multiple years going on. And so all this is doing is sort of showing you how there are lots and lots and lots of ways to take these basic ideas that we've started with and turn them into rather complex models that um, are useful in lots of real life situations. So we'll look at one more example. All right, so let's look at example three. The number of tourists visiting a ski and hiking resort averages 4,000 people annually and oscillates seasonally 1,000 above and below the average. Due to a marketing campaign, the average number of tourists has been increasing by 200 each year. Write an equation for the number of tourists after T years beginning at the peak season. Take a moment and try to see if you can figure out how to graph this or how to uh, create a model for this situation. Okay, so if you look at this, there are two basic components to it. We have the basic oscillation above and below the average, but then we also have a changing midline. So let's start with the part that's oscillating above and below. We're given information that the average is 2,000. Sorry, average is 4,000 people. And that the uh, oscillation is 1,000 above and below. that average. And so we want to try to, and we start with the uh, peak season. So we start high, so it starts at the peak, which means that we're going to start high, dip down, and go back up again. So here's the average. That's something like this. So this shape tells us it's going to be a cosine. It's going to be a positive cosine because we're starting at a peak instead of a valley. So we're going to have some sort of cosine something, something, something. Well, we need it to oscillate once every uh, once a year. So the period is just one year. And so our B value, which is 2 pi over the period, is just 2 pi. So we have cosine of 2 pi t. And then the size of the oscillation, plus or minus 1,000, is the amplitude of that internal thing. Now, the challenge for this one really is the midline part. How are we going to get the midline? And for this, we have to use the other information. We're starting at a 4,000 person average. And then it's going to go up 200 people for, per year. So in the second year, so this is year zero. So this is where we start off. After the first year, we're going to have 4,200. And after the second year, 4,400 and so on. And we just need to find some sort of mathematical formula that captures this type of behavior. And with a little bit of thinking, it's 400 plus 200 times the number of years, right? So after two years, it's gone up 200 twice. 200 twice is 400, 4,400. And so our model will look like this. 1,000 cosine 2 pi t plus 4,000 plus 200 t. And so over here, this is the changing midline part. And over here, this is what we've been talking about before. This is just the oscillating part. And so that's example three. If you have any questions about this one, let me know. All right, so that wraps up this series of videos. Um, like I said, this is a new experience for me. I'm just trying to do my best with the situation that we have. So if you have any questions, concerns, feedback, anything, you can always send me a message. Uh, this is, you know, something that again, I'm, I'm happy to make adjustments as we go forward, but you have to let me know how things are going. So feedback, positive, negative, neutral, whatever it is. Um, I'll even create a little assignment to give you some space to do that. Uh, but really, this is the time for us to figure out how we're going to move forward in this class. So let me know what you think. Thanks.